last week we focused on is just to understand the nature of this mitzvah, right? The mitzvah of, again, like the Pasuk says, again, we have it in front of you, the Pasuk says in Parashat Mishpat, and again, in Chet and Kesef, Tal Vesami, Esan Imach, that, uh, that when you lend my people, the poor of my people, money, they see like Kenosha, you shouldn't be aggressive about it, and you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't charge interest, and so on. But the inference of the Pasuk is that you have an obligation to lend money to my people and to uh, poor people. Again, we'll talk about that particular aspect of the Pasuk soon. <laughs> anyway, so that's the Pasuk, Mitzvah to lend money. So we talked about this last week, is that there are basically three opinions. It seems that there are three opinions in the Rishonim to understand what's the nature of this Mitzvah. So one opinion is the Rambam in Sefer Mitzvahs, that the nature of this Mitzvah is Tzedakah. We have a general umbrella Mitzvah called Tzedakah, which can be fulfilled in... Uh, in many, many ways, but the Pasuk is singling out this particular scenario that of all the situations of tzedakah that can be fulfilled, this one in particular, you have to be extra careful on, and if this particular situation arises, this is the one to, uh, to do more than other situations, and that's lending a Jew money. So that's the Rambam in Sefer Mitzvah. It's, it's, a, it's a particular uh, particular point within the umbrella Mitzvah of tzedakah. That was the Rambam in Sefer Mitzvah. And then you have the tour. And by the way, because of that, as we saw in the Rambam, it's something that's specific only to poor people, since it's under the category of tzedakah, so it's only going to be poor people. Then you have the tour, the opposite extreme. The tour said, no, this is not a particular scenario of mitzvah under the umbrella of tzedakah, rather this is a particular mitzvah under the umbrella of chesed, in general, in general chesed. And therefore, again, if many opportunities to do chesed, the hafli rech gemaycha could be fulfilled in many, many ways. But Lamaise, if this particular scenario arises, this is the way to be Mekayim the Mitzvah Chesed. And because of that, says the tour, it's not specific for Yidin. It could be anyone. It's Chesed. Chesed applies to any Jew. So that's the sheet of the tour. And then finally, we have the third sheet of, of the Rambam himself in Mishnah Torah. That there was a little bit of a change between his opinion in Sefer Mitzvahs versus Mishnah Torah. And in Mishnah Torah, what we saw was that the Rambam did not record this halacha in the halachas of Staka. And say for mitzvahs, mm-hmm. probably would have put it. He does not record it in the halachas of chesed, which is where the Torah would have put it. Rather, he puts it in the halachas of business, of malav of of, of the loans and commerce. That's where he puts these halachas. Mm-hmm. So he suggested that according to the Rambam, it seems that it's not a mitzvah that's that, that it's not a it's not a mitzvah of tzedakah or chesed. Tzedakah and chesed are mitzvahs that are focused on This person has a need. So I love him, I'm supposed to care for him, so I help him out. Rather, that's not how the Rambam views this mitzvah. This mitzvah, the Rambam sees it more within the Jew himself. There are halachas that govern our commerce. There's halachas that govern what type of business interactions you're allowed to be involved in, what not. So we have prohibitions uh, not charging interest. There's prohibitions of not overcharging if you're selling something, of not, uh, you know, uh, things like that. There's, there's halachas that govern business. So one of the mitzvahs of business and one of the business of, of one of the mitzvahs of, of commerce and interaction, how to deal with your money and, and, and you know, uh, to make sure that your portfolio is, uh, is a kosher one, is that in situations where you didn't come to ask for a loan, that you have to lend money to them. So that's part of the, 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 the it's a chayshin mishpat halach, it's part of the halach, it's, it's a mitzvah that's, that's governing your particular, your personal inyani mamin, your particular, your, your specific, uh, uh, transactions and business dealings. That's what the mitzvah halal is about. And what we saw last week is, is that a nafkamina, because of that, would be whether there's a cap on this mitzvah. Right? Because we saw that when it comes to tzedakah and chesed, it's even from the, from the Torah, according to Yerushalmi, it's been, it's been a Torah, but Chazal put a cap of a fifth. Right? Aser to Aser and Ruach, Yaakov Bina said, that Hashem, if you, put, if you show chesed and charity to me, then I will show chesed and charity to others, and I'll give a fifth of my property for charity. So you see, as Chazal said, oh, so you see a fifth and not more. And that's a cap that Chazal put on Stalk and Chesed. But it's not a cap that exists in other areas of halacha that's not Stalk and Chesed. So according to the Rambam and Mishnah Torah, this is a halacha of Chesh and Mishpah. It's, it's, it's a mitzvah that governs your monetary dealings, not because of Stalk and Chesed, just within yourself. Your monetary dealings, you, you have an obligation within yourself and you're in your monetary dealings to be open to lending you money if need be. So there's no cap on that. If a person theoretically can afford it, then the opportunity arises to give even more of a fifth, and that's what the person would do. And so there's no cap of a fifth in the sheet of the Rambam. We saw that already in the Chavetz Chaim also. 
that he already made a point of this, that the could be there's no cap. He was coming from a different angle that maybe there's no cap because it's, we're talking about a loan where you'll get the money back. So, you know, so just because there's a cap on stock in Chesel where you're not getting the money back, so there might not be a cap on loaning because uh, you could assume you will get the money back. But our point was that according to Rambam, there, there's, there's fundamentally no cap on it. It's not stuck in a chesed to commit. So that's what we saw as we looked, saw us last week. Okay, so now tonight we're going to go to some particular halachas of this Indian of lending you Jew money. And by the way, we'll see another nafkimina, I think, that comes from the Rambam, that it's a, it's, it's a, it's a mitzvah governing business as opposed to a mitzvah that's focused on, that's coming from Tzadok and Chesed. Okay, so if you uh, see the Marma comments that you have in front of you, so it happens to be, it's, it's, it's a halacha that, um, it's, it's pretty relevant. It happens, uh, it comes up all the time. In fact, I recently just got a question. About this, but, uh, it's, it's pretty relevant. So in, initially, we're going to see something that's not so, it's not uh, from our topic per se, but you'll see, uh, we'll get back to it. So in Marma number one, there's a Pasuk in Parshas Bahar, and there's a Medrash on that Pasuk. So the Pasuk says like this. Again, I'm, it, I didn't quote the entire Pasuk, but I'll read it to you. It says in Pasuk that when you sell something to your friend, right, to another Jew, or if you purchase something from your friend, from another Jew, so the Pasuk goes on, you're not allowed to overprice and, 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 and overcharge each other. So there's, a, there's an Isser prohibition of Aina. So if I'm selling something, I can't charge, uh, you know, I, I can't overprice it. Again, we're talking about a situation where the guy doesn't realize he's being ripped off. So I'm not allowed to, you know, rip someone off like that. And uh, the person, and let's say this, the buyer as well, he can't rip me off. I, I, know, I might not realize that I'm, that I'm getting much less value for it. And, uh, you know, I'm a sucker and the guy takes advantage of me. That's an Isra Haino. Isra Haino. That's the Isra Haino. So the Medrash over here is, is, is commenting, though, on the beginning of the Pasuk, that it says if you buy from your friend or if you sell from your friend, yeah. Yes, there's also on the buyer if he feels that he's getting a good deal because the seller doesn't cut the value of the item? It could be, yeah, yeah. The, you know, the halakhas of Ayn are complicated. Uh, it only has to, we're talking about something that there is like Mamash, a set market for it. And, you know, it's something that, you know, there's a clear overprice, underprice, you know. But uh, most things where there's no real set price, it's just, up to the buyer and seller to negotiate, then I know won't apply. But in theory, in theory, there is I know on both sides. Yeah. So the, again, the measure is commenting on the fact that how the pasuk begins: if you buy something from your friend or sell something from your friend. So says the medrash that we see from here, just as a sort of like an inference from the pasuk, we see a new idea. So says the medrash in boss limkar: if you have an opportunity to sell something, tim kol yisrael chavirach, sell it to a Jew, sell it to a Jew. In Basa Liknais, and if you have the opportunity to buy something, and there's a few people selling it, take them Israel Chagarecha, buy it from a Jew. In other words, the mentor is introducing us to a new idea, which is, it's not a new, new mitzvah, it's not one of the 613, but the mentor is telling us that we do see from a Pasuk a new idea, which is that if I, uh, if I, if there's two grocery stores to go to, I have to buy groceries, two grocery stores to go to, one's a Jew, one's a non Jew. So the Pasuk is saying, buy from your neighbor, buy from your friend, buy from the Jew. And the same thing is the opposite. If I'm, uh, if I'm selling something, selling my car, whatever it is, and I have two people that are interested in it, one's a Jew, one's a not, so you should uh, sell it to a Jew. That's what the Pasuk says. Okay. So now this is a new, new, again, like I said, this is not one of the 613, but this is a derivative of Chesed. We understand that there's a mitzvah to support another Jew, whether it be Yitzhak and Chesed and so on. So this is a, a new... Uh, you know, sort of angle of it, that even in buying and selling, you should go out of your way to buy and sell to and from a Jew as opposed to a non-Jew. Now, in terms of the practical details of this, what, are, let's say buying and selling, are the prices the same? Are the prices different? What are the details? So in Marmokka number two, there's a tshuva from the Ramah. It's, it's, a, it's a relatively famous, there's a whole safe we have shas and tshuvas from the Ramah. Uh, this is a, probably the most famous tshuva there. But the Ramah was dealing with a case of where you had a, uh, a person who, who had a, I mean, a copyright. In those days, it's hard to determine the copyrights, but the guy was printing shots. He, had like a, he was printing shots for many, many years. Bob Dalm Bobby. And then all of a sudden, you had a non Jewish uh, person that came and he started printing shots as well. He started selling it cheaper. And so the, the Jew was losing a lot of business. So the question that was asked to the Ramah is, are people allowed to buy the cheaper uh, set of shots from the non-Jew, even though it's hurting the business 
of the Jew. So the Ramah Paskins, it's a problem for many reasons. But one of the inyanim that the Ramah deals with and just works out is this halacha. The Bezrish again says, that if you have the opportunity to buy or sell to a Jew, then you should do the Jew more than the guy. So, uh, so what are the rules of that? So it says, says the Ramah, Marmaka number two, so the Ramah first explains. When the Pasik says and introduces us to this idea that there's a halacha of miyada misacha, that you have to, if the, if the option is to buy something from a Yehudi or not, you should buy it miyada misacha, you should buy it from the Jew. Mairi says the Ramah, this is talking about kishamayzel gabe. This is talking about even if miyada misacha, even if the non Jew is willing to sell this product to you for a lower price. So even if it means saving some of your money, again, you're, let's say you're buying, uh, you're buying something, and uh, you know, two people are selling it, a Jew or a non-Jew, and the non-Jew is actually cheaper. Afal peaking, despite that, the Pasuk is saying, you have to go to the Jew. Says the Ramah, why? Because if it's manish the same, the Jew and the guy are both selling the object for the, the, the thing, whatever it is, for the same price, it's our crook. Then that's an op- it's obvious that you have the opportunity to eat. it's mamish the same to go to the Jew or the non-Jew. Then certainly it's obvious that you that you should go out of your way to support your brother. So it w- you wouldn't need a pasuk to tell you that. The fact that pasuk has to go out of its way to say, by the way, that you should do your business, you should buy and sell from the Jew. Then it says there are Clearly, he's talking about even in a case of where you're where the other person, the non-Jew, is giving you a better deal. And even though he's giving you a better deal, still go to the Jew. Of course, certainly, if it was just mamish the same, the same price completely, then it would, it would, then you wouldn't need a pasuk. It's obvious that you would be obligated and it would be a mitzvah to go support uh, a Jewish business. That, that's 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 obvious. El shmami no the hachi So if we even need a pasuk to tell us this idea and to go out of its way and says you know do business with the Jew. Then clearly it's talking about that even if the non-Jew is giving you a better deal, again, whether he's selling you something cheaper or whether he's willing to buy something from you for more money, but he's giving you the better deal, then still a Jew comes first. That's the Ramah. Okay. So that's a Bechomra. That's a Bechomra. That, that if you have two opportunities of uh, buying something or selling something, a Jew and a non-Jew, so it says the Medrash, you should go to, go to the Jew. And says the Ramah, even if the non is giving you a better price, or again, whether it be offering you more money to buy something, or asking for less money to sell something. The Jew still has to be a non Huh? The Jew still has to be a non You can't, you can't, so, you can't, you can't go crazy. Right, you can't go crazy. Right, so the question is how, how crazy can we go? So that, uh, 50 mean, yeah, so we can go, we can go even less. So let's see. So now we're going to see a few Hatayim, okay? So let's let let's understand the, the, the number of atim that we're going to see so f- that we're going to see coming up are fundamentally rooted with the following idea. The following idea is that this is not one of the six thirteen. In other words, we all understand that when it comes to one of the real let's say real mitzvahs, one of the uh, mitzvahs that we're obligated to, to fulfill, then we have to do it even if it, even if it costs us money. Right? So you have a mitzvah to shake with an esrei. Okay, so. It costs money to shake to, to buy Luvin Esri. Even if it means spending money, so you have to spend money to do a mitzvah. So you have to have a mezuzah on your door. It takes money to maybe buy a mezuzah. Okay, so you have to spend money to buy the mezuzah. This mitzvah over here is already not a mitzvah like Sheikh Luvin Esri and buying a mezuzah where, listen, I have to sell things to a Jew. Even if it means spending money on that, even if it means losing money on that, I have to shake Luvin Esri, I have to spend money for that. So I have to sell things to a Jew, I have to spend money on that too. That's not what, what this means. This is a mitzvah. This is just one example of a chesed that a Jew can fulfill by doing business with another Jew. So it's not, we're not talking about a scenario where there's a bona fide mitzvah to do this, where automatically there's an obligation to do it by any means. So we understand that it's not going to be by any means necessary. It's going to be within reason of what's considered normal and, uh, and understandable in the world of chesed. You don't have to go crazy like this. I can fulfill chesed in other ways, right? So I could, this guy, this guy wants to buy something for me and he's giving me a very low bull offer and he happens to be a Jew, but, and this, so I'm doing, so I would say yes, why? To fulfill chesed. So at the same time, I could help this old lady across the street and fulfill chesed in that way. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not like I have to, this is my only opportunity, this is my obligation to do, I have to spend money for it. It's just another example of chesed. 
So it goes. It, so it's reasonable to assume that this is not something that I have to that I have to do by any means necessary, and even if it means costing a lot of money, if if it if it's reasonable to do this, then fine. What's considered reasonable? So this is where the Acharnim come in and explain to us what's considered reasonable. So first of all, first of all, in Marmokah number three, so the Chavetz Chaim in Sefer Avos Chesed, in the Halachas of Halva, so he, he quotes this uh, concept, this Medrash, and he says the following thing. And he, the Ramah, again, the Ramah told us that even if it means, you know, that the guy is giving you a better deal, but how much? Valkarchach says the Chavetz Chaim, it, it must be, Kavanasi, that the intention of the Ramah is, First of all, first qualification. Even when the Ramah says that you have to do business with the Jew, even though the guy is giving you a better deal, what does it mean a better deal? Says the Chavetz Chaim, a small, a small something that's a Dover Muat. It's considered to be a small little uh, benefit dealing with the guy. Small benefit. The Lav if we're talking about a significant amount of uh, price difference, that's for sure not. Again, it's coming from this basic idea. Again, I hope it's, it's clear that this is, again, not like putting on tefillin where I have to do it even if it costs me a lot of money. I have no choice. This is not one of those mitzvahs. This is just another example of a way to do chesed. And there's many other ways to do chesed. So even though I have to be willing to lose a little bit of money to do this particular way, form of chesed, but again, it has to be, it has to be considered reasonable. What's reasonable? So first qualification says the Ramah, uh, says the Chavetz Chaim, even if the guy is giving you a better deal, if he's giving you a really better deal, then it's fine. We're talking about a Dover Muat. Again, what's considered a Dover Muat? Obviously, it depends on the deal. You know, if we're talking about a million dollar deal, and uh, the difference in price is a couple hundred dollars, maybe that's considered a Dover Muat. If, it's, if the whole thing is a couple hundred dollars, and he's... Uh, giving you a, a difference in price of $50, then maybe that's considered to be a bigger amount. So again, that's obviously relative to the situation. But whatever it is, you know, I guess lo- ask your local Orthodox rabbi, but it's the, a Dover Muat is what is reasonable. Beyond a Dover Muat, that's, that's unreasonable to assume that you have to fulfill this, th- this particular mitzvah chesed right now. That's qualification number one. Okay, qualification number two. Marmaka number four. So Ramosha in Igris Moshe and Yardea, Chela Gimel, Simen Tzadi Gimel, talks about this also. And he gives another qualification. First of all, he says, Shaloi Ayri Besoich, it's a big head there. He says, the, says the, 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 said the, this whole halacha is not talking about when you are buying or selling because that's your parnasa. El Abhizdamas, we're talking about a random situation. I happen to be selling my used car. It's not my business, I'm not a used car salesman. It happens to be, I'm just selling my used car. And randomly, people come to me to buy it. And one's a Jew, one's a non-Jew. That's when these halachas kick in. But if my business is selling used cars, then, I, then even if it's a small difference in price, I have to do what's considered to be normal and, uh, and responsible in terms of business. Because again, it's all coming from this idea that uh, I have to do what's considered uh, reasonable. And it's unreasonable to expect a person whose business is to sell uh, to sell uh, used cars to just give every Jew a better deal because he's, uh, you know, he's giving, um, you know, because he's a Jew. If it's, if it's your business, then that's something else. Then that's something else. It's not talking about a businessman where, again, this is the product that he's buying and selling. We're talking about a random thing. So, like, for example, so in a grocery store. So grocery store also, the guy, this is business. He's selling uh, groceries. He can't just all of a sudden give different prices for different uh, types of people. Not, again, not because we're concerned about people, you know, non-Jews getting upset. It's just bad sense. It's, it's unreasonable. F- again, it's all coming from chesed. He can fulfill chesed in other ways. This is just one particular scenario for fulfilling chesed. And because of that, you don't have to go out of your way to uh, do something that's considered to be unreasonable to do that, to fulfill that. Shaliyar b'sorch el v'zdamnas. And then, the, then Ramosha says the same thing as the Chavetz Chaim, v'at v'zdamnas. And you should know, even if it's a random thing, so you're selling your used car even though that's not your business. If it's a big difference in price, you're also not obligated. So these are the two qualifications so far. Number one, the difference in price has to be minimal. And number two, this has to be a side thing that you're doing right now, buying and selling, but not your parnasa. That's, uh, those are the two major terms. That the hefter of Seicher only yeah. applies to the seller, right? If you're, when you're buying from businesses, then 
as well, a if private your business person, is buying, well, so if you're a private person buying from business, yeah, then it's then not going to be relevant to you, right? Because it'll be up to them, you know. But if you're a second buying, let's say to resell, you're, right, right, exactly, then that's your business, and that's not that's not the hisdomus. Hisdomus means a random thing, or it's a you know, it's no big deal like that. Now, by the way, if you take uh, one one last chapter, we'll see. If you take a look at Marmok number six, we'll skip five for a second. Let's go to six. This is another hetter from the Chavetz Chaim. The dot you should know. And it's, it, it's, you know, it's an obvious point, but it's, uh, you know, just to, to, to spell it out. Says the Mishnah, says the, the Chavetz Chaim, even if we're talking about a random scenario where you're selling a used car, and we're talking about the difference in price is a small amount, so then you should have to sell it to the non-Jew. But says the Chavetz Chaim, this is all talking about something where there is no clear value in the market of what this product should cost. It's just, you're making up numbers as you go along, kind of. Okay, so it's not your business, and this guy is giving you, and the guy is offering you a little bit more money than the Jew. Okay, so sell it to the Jew. But if this is something that I know what this, the value is, right? And this is my red line that I'm, I'm not, I have no interest in selling this under this amount, that, that I'm losing money. So he says, Davar Shemech Yidu is something that the market is known, the value is known for this in the market. But a guy writes a litin like Kifia Mekach, and the guy is willing to give you that price, or even over that price. And so that's, that's reasonable. But Yisrael writes a Sheyoyzel Men Mekach, but the Jew is now, you know, he's, he's asking you, you know, he's offering you a price that's under that red line. Again, it's not an arbitrary line. This is what, this is the value of this product by anyone. This is what it's, this is what it's worth. Then Loit Tzif Sol Tervez, and that's, there's no mitzvah to then sell it to the Jew. Think about this. Even if you didn't have any other any other offer, would you sell it to the Jew for that price? You wouldn't. So, so now that you have another offer, then you have to sell it to him. Right? So it goes without saying that we're talking about, in other words, the Chavetz Chaim is making a point, is that it goes without saying we're talking about a, an offer that the, that the Jew is giving you that you would listen to. It just happens to be, uh, you know, the, the guy is giving me a better offer. Okay, so now we have to think about this halacha. But if the Jew is offering you, giving you an offer that, that, that you wouldn't even consider just by itself, then, then obviously I don't have to consider it now that there's a guy giving me a better offer. So again, we're talking about, again, that these are the, the terms that, that we're working with. It says, again, it says the Chavetz Chaim, There'll be no obligation just them to sell things you know, below market value because, of, uh, because the Jew's asking for it. There's no such thing. The chaylin, the same thing is the other way. <coughs> so if you're buying a used car and the guy is offering, uh, and, and you're, and you're, and if you could buy it from the guy to market value, it's a and and the Jew is is giving you a higher price. If that price that the Jew is offering you is not something that you would consider, then obviously you don't. Okay, now I have no choice to, to buy it. But you don't. You don't have to buy it. Right? Obviously you don't have to. So these are the terms that we're working with. Again, just the chazer real quickly. Again, the pasuk we have the pasuk of the chisim ku memkel amisecha, I kenoi mi amisecha. That we have, you have a general mitzvah of supporting another Jew, chesed and stocka, and then it says the pasuk. An example of that, uh, a way to fulfill that, is to do business with another Jew, to buy a product from a Jew, to sell products to a Jew, and says the Ramah, And if the pasuk has to go out of its way to tell us this, says the Ramah, it means even. If the guy is giving you a better offer, Afal Pekin, go to the Jew. But, again, since this is not a mitzvah like Kalas and Tefillin, where you have to just spend money to do, it's only just a particular example of a way to fulfill chesed, which you can fulfill by helping the old lady across the street. So therefore, it's understood that this mitzvah of spending money and uh, doing business with a Jew over a guy is not something that you have to do it in an unreasonable way. So therefore, it has to be reasonable. What's considered reasonable? So we had a few atayra. Number one, this can't be Yerika Parnasa. If it's Yerika Parnasa, then don't give anyone any deals. Number two, it ha- even if it's not Yerika Parnasa, the difference in, 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 in all, the offers have to be small. And number three, it has to be, the Jew has to be offering a price you know, or, or asking for a price that you, would, that you would consider. If it's not a price that, in your mind, it's, uh, it's not worth it, then obviously you're not obligated to do that. So this is all in terms of buying and selling, buying and selling from the Jew. But now let's get back to our sugya of lending, of lending money to the Jew. There's a Gemara of Asra that talks about a similar scenario of Jew versus Goy in terms of lending. 
So like I said, the Pasuk that this entire mitzvah of lending money to a Jew was coming from was in Kesef Talvas Ami Es Ha'ani Ima. Again, if, when you lend money to my people, to poor, to poor people. So the Gemara Bab Metzia is dealing with, why does it have to say this two things? Just say, in Kesef Talvas Ami, if you, say, if you lend money to a poor Jew. Lend money to my people, to a poor Jew. What's this addition of my people? So it says the Gemara in Bab Metzia number, number seven. So Marmokka number seven is the Gemara Metzia Ayin Aleph and Aleph. It says the Gemara Omar Mar. The Gemara says it says in Pasuk Ami in Kesef Talvis Ami if you that you should lend money to my people. It says the Gemara what the Pasuk is trying to hint to is the following halacha Ami the Nachri Ami Kaiver that if you have the opportunity to lend money to a Jew or to a non-Jew you should lend money to the Jew. That's the that's the interpretation of the Gemara in that Pasuk. Says the Gemara Pshita, obviously, like it goes without saying, right? Like just like the Ramos said, what do you need a plus to tell me do business with a Jew? Obviously, if you have the opportunity, it's all the same. Certainly, do business with a Jew. So same thing over here. If it's all the same, you're lending money anyway. Uh, certainly, do business with the, uh, lend money to the Jew. Why do you have to have a plus indicating this? Like lend money to my people. Amr of Nachman. So Rav Nachman said, Amr Lehuna, that Rav Huna told me, Lehnitzercha that the scenario is as follows: Da'afilu lenochi berivis liyisrael b'chinu. Because right? we know that you're not allowed to, when you lend money to a Jew, we saw the Pasuk says you're not allowed to charge interest. But for a non-Jew, you're allowed to charge interest. So let, now the scenario is interesting. I have, I have money to lend. A, a Yid is asking for a loan. But with him, there's no interest that I can charge. A non-Jew is asking for a loan. With him, I can charge interest. So that's what the Pasuk says. In case of, so therefore, you might think, you might think over there, oh, you know, if, if, I, if I lend money to the guy, means uh, I'll be making money. I could charge, who knows how much interest can I, right? And that, the Pasuk says, no, no, in case of Tal Basami, you have to lend money to my people. You have to lend money to my people. So we have another, again, a similar scenario. A similar scenario. Where again, just like when it comes to buying and selling a used car. So even, so we had in a situation of where if I deal with a guy, it'll be better for me. I get a better, I get a better deal. But no, do the, do the business with the Yid. So same thing, and it comes with Halva. I could do the halva, I could lend the money to the guy, I'll get a better deal from it, I'll be able to charge rivets. No, do it with the year. Do it with the year. In case of but here's, but here's the nakuda though. How do the same rules apply that we saw, you know, sort of limiting the obligation of buying and selling to a Jew, do those limitations apply to lending to a Jew? And, the, the, and, the, and, and basically, there's a fundamental point over here. Whereas selling the used car to a Jew, there was no mitzvah. Again, remember, all the heterim that we saw from Ramayisha and the Chavetz Chaim and so on were fundamentally rooted on an assumption, which is that selling your used car to a, go- to a Jew is not like shaking with an esr. It's not something, it's not a mitzvah by itself that you have to do. It's just, uh, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a universal mitzvah of chesed. Okay, there's an opportunity to do chesed. Okay, I can find other opportunities to do chesed. It's not a mitzvah by itself where there's an obligation to, set, to spend money to do it. So over there, because of that, there are basic limitations. I don't have to do anything. It's abnormal. It's abnormal to lose a lot of money for, for, for that situation. It's abnormal to, uh, to, to, to sell my used car for a price that I wouldn't otherwise consider. Because again, there's no, it's, not, it's not like buying a mezuzah where I, ha- I have no choice. I have to buy a mezuzah. I have no choice. I have to sell this guy a used car. It's not like that. But when it comes to lending a Jew money, as we saw last week, there's a mitzvah in Tudor. It's one of the 613 in Kesef Tal Vazam. There's a mitzvah to lend money. So it, now that there's an actual bona fide mitzvah of lending a Jew money, okay, so now maybe you can make the argument, now that it's its own independent mitzvah in Kesef Tal Vazam, I have to spend money to do it. And even if it's a lot of money, maybe it's not uh, you know, more than any other mitzvah, but... But, uh, but it, whatever mitzvah I would spend on buying a pair of tefillin, maybe that's the mitzvah, that's the amount of money I have to spend to lend this Jew money. So even though I wouldn't have to spend that much or lose that much to sell him my used car, because there's no mitzvah to sell my used car. But over here, there's a mitzvah to lend money to a year. So do those heterim apply? You can make the argument they do not. Because again, <coughs> those heterim are fundamentally rooted on an assumption, which is there is no mitzvah to sell your used car to a Jew, which is true. If you sell your used car to a Jew, you're fulfilling chesed, but, uh, but you don't have to do that in an unreasonable way. But there is a mitzvah, you have to buy a mezuzah, you have no choice. So there's a mitzvah, you have to sell another Jew money, you have no choice. So do those limitations apply? 
So it's a, it, so there are achrayim that say no. If you take a look at Maramukha number eight, so the Megillus Esther is one of the achrayim uh, on the Sefer Mitzvahs of the Rambam. So on his commentary to the Sefer Mitzvahs in Shor so the the Megillus Esther it references our Gemara that we just saw above Mitzia that the pasuk tells you that you have to lend the Jew money even if you have an opportunity of lending a guy which you'll be able to make a lot of money, you'll be able to make money off of ribbons. Says in the Gilsester, Yitzchak Kralar Vuya. You need a Pasuk to tell you this. Shetaktim halvos Yisrael halvos nachri b'ribbis. That you have to lend the Jew money over lending the non-Jew where you have the opportunity of charging ribbis. Says that in the Gilsester, Bahalvos goi b'ribbis sheish b'y revach gadol. And you should know this obligates you even if, even if lending the non-Jew money would give the opportunity to make a lot of money with interest. That het there that we saw already when it came to selling your used car, that again, the Chavetz Chaim and Ramesha said, no, 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 it's only with a small amount, says Miguel Sessor that does not apply to this mitzvah of lending a Jew money. Even l- lending a Jew money, even if it means losing the opportunity of making a lot of money, that's something that you have to be willing to do. If there was a lot of money to be gained with Rivas, then you might think, maybe, okay, that's unreasonable. Kamash no, Kamash Kra. Dim Kasef, the Yisrael is a mistake, the Yisrael Taitim. Then no, even in such a scenario, a Jew comes first. Now the, 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 the logic of the Megillah Sester, again, first of all, you could, you could simply make the argument that maybe uh, lending money, you know, uh, I'm not losing anything because I'll get the money back. But the, it's, there are problems with that story. But to explain the Megillah Sester, it could fundamentally be what we're talking about before, which is, again, there's no mitzvah, there's no mitzvah to sell your used car. If I do it, if I'm, I'm born chesed, there's no mitzvah by itself. It's not like Megillah, it's not like it's a thousand film, you know. But when it comes to lending a Jew money, that's its own mitzvah, and I have to spend money for it. So I have to spend money for it. But here, this is what connects to what we talked about last week. Now, if you remember, the first few minutes of the shir, we, we, we has it over. What is the fundamental mitzvah of lending a Jew money? So we saw that, that there are two basic camps. One camp is, it's dok and chesed. It's dok and chesed. Again, okay, so one mission says Taka, one mission says Chesed, Taka Chesed. But then we saw that there's another Shika, which was the Ramam himself, and again, the Chazar of the Ramam does not record this mitzvah of lending a Jew money in Hilchas Taka. He does not record it in Hilchas Chesed. The Ramam records it in Hilchas Ma'al what we, what we saw was that, the, that what the Ramam is telling us is that this is not a mitzvah in Adam Chavir per se. This is a mitzvah within Hilchas commerce, within Hilchas Mamanis. That just like there's there's a laws governing how how you how your business transactions have to be there's halachas no there's ribis there's all sorts of halachas governing how Jewish commerce should look like so there's another mitzvah within 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 Tyra that governs also how Jewish commerce should look like which is that an, oppor- an opportunity of, of of lending a Jew money arises you have to be willing to do it now let's think for a second if the mitzvah of lending a Jew money is a business sticking mitzvah. It's within that world of business. Remember, like last week we said, why does the Pasuk have to say, like, in Kesef, if you, if you lend money, but it really means you have to. Why well, say it in the, in the word in? So he said, because if, if the mitzvah is fundamentally a business stick of mitzvah, like this, you're doing business. So what the Pasuk is saying is, you don't have to do business. I'm not saying that you have to be a businessman. The whole Indian of business and commerce is something that's sort of ma- man-made. Like, theoretically, we could just all live on a farm and self-sustain ourselves and You'll just eat uh, carrots all day and finish. Like, you don't have to buy and sell. Nope. Okay, you don't want to just eat carrots all day. You want to have asparagus. And this guy has an asparagus farm. Oh, so I want to be able to get some of your asparagus. Okay, so because of that, we now come up with this idea of I'll give you this trinket, and this trinket you consider to be a certain value, and I'll get asparagus for it. Well, well some of you have business made. It's not, the Torah didn't give us business. You know what I'm saying? It's something that we create on our own. Therefore, the whole thing is in. So, in case of Tal Zombies. You, you don't have to lend. This mitzvah of lending money is itself rooted on something which is was somewhere arbitrary and something that didn't have to be, per se. If it, this is a mitzvah within business, then I think logic would dictate that this, that the, the gedarim, the, the, the rules and regulations of this mitzvah have to be within the world of business. In other words, the argument can be made that since the mitzvah of Mkes of Talbas Ami is a business like a mitzvah, it's within Chesh and Mishpat, so to speak, it's within Malva Valoiva, then it's, then it's, un, then, 
then logic says that this mitzvah is not going to obligate me to do something that business sense says, don't do this. So even though the Pusik says that, yes, if you have an opportunity, if the guy is offering you an opportunity to lend him money with interest, go to the Jew, so fine, a little bit, a little bit. But when the disparity is so great, I can make so much money from him, business logic says this is a bad idea. So although it's true, business logic would say even if it's a difference in one dollar, it's a bad idea. So that, what the Pusik says, no, no, no. It, that much ignore business logic and do this mitzvah. But so much so to say that I can just completely ignore business logic and even if, it, even if it's my business of lending money. Like I'm, that's what I do for a parnasa. And the opportunity over here that the guy is offering me is a huge, is a huge profit. Afal Pekin to ignore it? If this is, again, so what we're saying is like this, even though what we're suggesting is not like the Megillah Sester, that even though it's its own mitzvah, it's true, but it's still fundamentally not like thousands of it's still different than buying a mezuzah where I have no choice. I have to spend money. Why? Buying a mezuzah, that's not a business that can mitzvah. It's not, it's not, it's not, a, a, it's not a, a, a footnote, and it's not a, a, a particular chapter within my portfolio. It's not a, it, it has nothing to do with, 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 with business. So fine. I have to see mezuzahs cost money, so I have to spend money to buy a mezuzah. Mm-hmm. But over here, the mitzvah of lending a Jew money is that I perform business. This is how, this is how I live. This is how the world goes. There's such a thing as Mecca Chumemker. Within the world of, me, of my personal Mecca Chumemker, I have to make sure that, there's, that I'm willing and able, not able, but I'm willing to lend a Jew money. But since it's within the context of Nova Valoyeva, of Mecca Chumemker, of business, so it has to fit in that world, in the world of business. If it's something that completely runs against every rule of business, of business uh, reality, then it's unreasonable to think that the mitzvah is going to obligate me to do that. It's, not, it's, 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 it's a mitzvah that exists within the world of Mecca Chumemker. And in fact, this is the opinion of the Shahar Mishra. You take a look at Marmokka number 9. So the Shahar Mishra was one of the great Achrayim. So he writes in his commentary to Shulchan Arach, Ach ben Nira, it seems to me to be truth. Dehod de mitzvah lehavelis liyisrael b'china, melaakum b'ribis. This idea of lending a Jew money, even if it's, you know, uh, over a non-Jew, even though the non-Jew is offering you interest. Hudavke kesha ribis hudavr mulay. It's only if the interest is a small amount. And so then, it's a small amount. But if it's a lot of money that he's that he's offering you, ain't Then logic dictates that it's it's unreasonable to do that. We mean unreasonable. Who cares? It's a mitzvah. It's a mitzvah to lend a Jew money. It's a mitzvah to buy mezuzah. You say it's unreasonable to spend that much. That's what you have to do. The answer is, yes, it's a mitzvah to lend a Jew money. But the mitzvah of lending a Jew money is within the context and within the sugyas of Mecca Chumemka, and therefore it's governed by the logic of Mecca Chumemka. I understand even with that. The Pasuk says, go a little bit out of your way to lend a Jew money, but not, not in a way that completely you know, rips up everything that, uh, that you learned in business school. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's going on over here. So that's another nafka, I mean, again, going back. So we have this Iker Shabbat. Mm-hmm. What is the nature of this mitzvah? Is it stuck of the chesed? Or is it within the context of business? So now what comes out of it is that we have sort of two nafka. Number one nafka that we saw last week is, is there a cap? Is there a cap of a fifth? in this mitzvah of lending a Jew money. Let's say you want to lend money. You want to. It doesn't make sense to business, but you want to anyway. Would Chazal stop you from lending more than a fifth of your, of your assets? So if it's stuck in chesed, it's stuck on a sush. You're not allowed to spend for it's stuck in chesed more than a fifth. But if it's within business, there's no such limitation. The whole limitation came from Yaakov Avinu offering a fifth as chesed in a response to Hashem's chesed. Thing. But if it's business, there's no limitation on that was nafkamina number one, and now we're seeing another nafkamina is that if it's a is it, if it's a stock and chesed dike mitzvah versus a business dike mitzvah, is it something that I have to that am I am I obligated to do this even when my business sense says this is unreasonable? So again, uh, you might not uh, we're not talking about spending a fortune on it, but uh, you know if there's if the if the non-Jew is offering to to uh, borrow from you. With, with a lot of interest, more than just the Dover but a lot of interest. So if it's a business that can mitzvah, then says the Sharm Mishpat. The Sharm Mishpat is then correct. It, it, then, then it's illogical to say that a business that can mitzvah would obligate you to do something which is illogical in business. Halach l'maysa. Halach l'maysa. So the Chavetz Chaim and Ramesha also, they hold, like the Sharm Mishpat, Halach l'maysa, that, that the only time that you would have to lend the Jew money over lending a non-Jew money with interest is only again a double move. So Allah Lamaisa, what comes out of all this is 
is that if we'll assume like the Rambam in Mishnah Torah that this is a business to a mitzvah, then what comes out of all this is is that both in terms of selling a used car and in terms of lending money, it has to be within what's considered to be reasonable. What's reasonable? Number one, it's not your business. It's not your Ikar Parnasa. If it's your Ikar Parnasa, then you do what you have to do, even if it's a little bit. Number two, uh, it's something that's only a Dover Muat. If it's a huge profit that you could be making, then then Adraba, then make the profit, make the profit. And number three, what we saw is it has to be a situation where where you you where, where you're you're able to do it. So uh, if, if the Jews offer you a price, that's uh, forget a non Jew. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a price I'm willing to sell my car for. Or he's asking for a loan that I, I just can't afford. Then obviously it goes without saying that you, you're not obligated to do that. You can't. Uh, that's that's considered to be unreasonable. One last nakuda that we'll just end with. Oh, by the way, this is an important one. Take a look at the, the final marmokim. This is referring to, it really, it applies to all these scenarios of buying and selling and lending, although it's, he's, th- this Marmokim is specifically addressing lending, because it's more relevant, but this is from the Aguda, one of the, one of the late Mishayim. So he talks about this halacha of lending, he's, he's referring back to this halacha of lending a Jew money versus a non-Jew, that the Gemara says, if there's a small difference in price, difference, uh, if you can make a little bit of money, then do it with the Jew. So it says the Aguda, nearly, you should know, it seems to me, it's, it's, it's an obvious point. We're talking about a scenario where they're both, as, as, they're, they're both equally trusted. Right? Because you talk, it knows, if you're dealing with lending money, uh, it means that I have to assume and I have to trust you to eventually get paid back. Either you're going to give me a machine, you'll give me a, what do they call it? The collateral. collateral. Or maybe the witnesses or whatever it is, or you're just a trustworthy person. But if you have a situation of where the Jew is asking for a loan and the non-Jew is asking for a loan, even if, this is the Chiddush of the year, even if it's a Jew that I would lend money to, but comparatively speaking, the non-Jew is more trustworthy in this particular situation, then says the Aguda, then you, then you lend it to the non-Jew. They have to be assuming that they're the same in terms of trustworthiness and confidence that I have in getting my money back. Okay, that, that, that's what we're talking about again. But if the scales are tilted in the other way, then certainly not, you know. Um, by the way, another obvious uh, situation, another, uh, just, you know, another, I guess you call it a heter, in this entire sugya, is everything until now was, was presenting, was a situation where the, both, it's, they were both presenting themselves at the same time, right? So I have a, I'm selling a used car, I have two customers walking in, right? Or I'm about to lend money, and two people come. Or even if they're mamish, not the same time, but at least I, I know the other person is coming, so they're both at the same, you know, but if, let's say, for example, you already have, you, you already have a business, uh, business deal with a non-Jew, right? It's already uh, it's finalized, but it's already in the process. The wheels have already been in motion and so on. And then all of a sudden, a yid comes that wants to, you know, and, and, and now the question is to stop the deal that already has begun with the non-Jew. Or let's say the partnership, you know, situations come up, a person has, has, has it, it's not one particular thing that you're buying and selling, it's just a partnership sort of that you have with this guy that for the past number of years, every time you have a used car, you sell it to him, you know, things like that. So uh, again, it might be a little bit trickier, but assuming like in, like in business, when you have a, sort of a relationship already with this, with this non-Jew, and because of that, obviously, you probably trust him, and you know, you can, you, you know that he's able to handle you know, the, uh, your business and so on, and then all of a sudden you have a Jew coming that says, you know what, uh, you're up because it says in the measures that you have to buy and sell from a Jew first. So in those situations, it's not it's not an issue. B'chlaf, first of all, in those situations, usually that's your parnasa, you know. So then, then for sure. But again, we're talking about where all these all these situations, the opportunities are coming, presenting themselves, sort of at the same time or relatively speaking, the same time. But if it's uh, you know the guy comes first and you're already dealing with him, and all of a sudden, much later, the Jew comes, that's, then that's not what the bus is talking about. That's simply not what the bus is talking about. But that's what's fundamentally going on over here. Again, it's a uh, what we're seeing over here is a, is a huge chiddush, because again, that fundamentally, this mitzvah is a business to a mitzvah. Now, again, like I mentioned last week, the flyer says that it's halacha and pinyin, so I, have, uh, I don't want to, you know, I, I, I make Yaakov Josefi like crazy about all these flyers, I don't want to, I can't uh, make him upset, you know, I have to say something that he needs to. So last week we talked about the pinyin, so this mitzvah of lending a Jew money, um, and again, the, the question, uh, the, 
the philosophical question in philosophy, the question is always why why is there a mitzvah to lend a Jew money? That's philosophy. That's not our sugya. Panimius, the question is not why is there a mitzvah. The question is what is this mitzvah? What part of the nefesh is activated when you perform this mitzvah? That that's a panimius thicker question. So we said last week that the the Indian the 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 uh, the R of Hashem, the light of Hashem, the influence, the the kaiches, the shefa that comes into the neshama when one is performing this mitzvah is the strength that Hashem gives you to to perform your avodas Hashem. We we talked about this last week. The Gemara says when it comes to chasen nikal that ain isha mesabersa biyarishayma. That's in the first uh, bia. The woman doesn't become pregnant. The cow doesn't become pregnant. Only because the first bia fundamentally is about preparing her to become pregnant. And so the same thing is with her banish lalom. It takes a certain amount of divine energy. Not energy, not enough just like to get you out of bed. I'm talking about what, what gives us the strength, the spiritual strength, to perform an act of taking leather boxes and wrapping it on our arms what gives us the ability and the power that that somehow activates the higher world? Because you get, you know, I, I could take, um, I could take, uh, you know, you could have, uh, I don't know, whatever it is. I, I could do a mini physical. I could do jumping jacks. It's not being piled. It's not, it's not doing much. It's not doing much in me. It's not doing much in the higher world. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, I give a quarter to Tzedakah, or all of a sudden I... Uh, I, uh, again, I put on tzitzis or I put on tefillin. Not only is there a physical act going on, but that physical act has unbelievable koiches and it impacts the higher world. Somehow the, the description is that we're talking about the ability of being malaman, of taking things of this world and somehow being able to be involved in activities of this world and being poil in the heart. Where, where do you get such koiches from? The answer is you don't have a koiches yourself. There was a birushayna. There was a birushayna. When the neshama comes to the world, the Rabbani Shalom imbues within us that divine power to then be able to take things of this world which, be, which be'etzem, which fundamentally are mundane, and somehow they're able to have an unbelievable effect on the heart. That, that's called the Bir that the Rabbani Shalom Kaviyachal had with us. And now that we have the Bir now the Nekeva, the Kala, can, can uh, come towards the Chassan with all the kishutim, with all the ornaments and all the adornments that she has, then the chassan will, will be mashpia again and will be able to have an unbelievable shafa together. But the kaychas to, to even become pregnant to be able, to be able to be poil, to be able to, to, to develop something in the womb that's more than just uh, a physical pipa, but to be able to tap into the potential contained in that pipa, there needs to be a birushayna first. So the mitzvah of halva. Mitzvah halva, which practically is what? It's like we saw last week. A Jew that's not poor yet. He just needs a loan. And if you give him that loan, he'll be able to stand on his own two feet. That's a mitzvah which activates the, that kaych of birishayim. So when we perform that mitzvah, we're being mechazik within ourselves and within everyone else. The ability to what? To engage in things that are fundamentally mundane and fundamentally insignificant, but somehow be able to find the unbelievable depth and significance in those mundane things. That's what it is. Because of that, according to the Rambam, this mitzvah is fundamentally, it's, it's fundamentally rooted in something that's fundamentally mundane, or what seems to be mundane, which is Mecca Chumemka. The whole Indian of this mitzvah is to give us the Kayach to take that which initially seems as mundane, futile, unnecessary, just happens to be, which is really all physical life, and transform it into something unbelievably great through the Bir Shem that Rabbi Shalom had with us. And so therefore, coded in this mitzvah are these two qualities. First of all, the mitzvah is what? Is to help a Jew stand on his own two feet. That's the mitzvah of Allah. And number two, it's fundamentally part of a sugya, which seems to be pretty mundane and pretty secular. And the Pasuk itself it already addresses this as in Kes of Talbot The sugya that it's revolving around, the, 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 the ground under this mitzvah's feet is something that's like, kind of doesn't have to be. And so, other hagufa. That's exactly why the mitzvah is in the world of commerce, because the sight of the mitzvah is giving you the kaiches to involve yourself in things that on the surface seem completely insignificant, and to be able to find the depth and the and the and the kedusha and the elokus and the the infinity behind those finite experiences. 
and the experience of all experiences, which seems to be the most finite and the most insignificant and the most like to be ever, is what? It's something that comes to us because of the chayt that he us. Right? The whole inner mechach of Memphis. Mom seems to be a big bit yet. But Adarabah, the kaychas of a yid is to be engaged in those things which seem to be a bit and to and to and to and to sort of draw out from them sparks of divinity. <coughs> and our ability to do that comes from the Biri Shaina that Rabbi Hashem had. As Rabbi Hashem comes to the world, he imbues with us with his divine light to such a degree that even now that we're involved in things which only came to us as Mamash al because of the the Khit the Yitzhadas and the Zeta Bakat Bakalaram, that Alpha P came, we should have the Kaichis the and the and the, the eyes of the Rabbanishon to be able to find within those things Mamish Kedusha and Elakus that comes from the Rishana Dasalin is the Mitzvah Halva. So the whole Indian of, of Mitzvah Salva is revolving in this Nakuda of giving a Jew the his own ability to find Kedusha in the mundane. And to uplift it, and that's exactly what the mitzvah, the, the gedar, the halachis of mitzvah salva, is therefore going to be sort of reflected of that inner truth of what's taking place on a deeper level in the mitzvah salva. Okay, so we should be zaycha to uh, you know, no, no yid should be in need, you know, but uh, but this itself by learning about this mitzvah, so it should be almanas uh, lasa. So we should be zaycha to have those kaiches to be able to be mavar all the birurim and take care of all the bezei sefecha tayvelechans. We should be able just to get back to Gan Eden. Based on setting there in the moment. I guess next week, we'll, uh, well, ne- next week rather, I'm, I'm not going to be here to so mm-hmm. it's not going to be here next week. But I guess the following week, we'll pick up on a new mitzvah.